During the war, German scientists and engineers managed to develop and build a number of jet-powered aircraft, several of which went on to see combat. What is generally less well known are the large number of experimental jets that were proposed and prototyped. These designs utilized a great variety of engines, airframes, and weapons. One of these unfinished projects was the Messerschmitt P-1101 jet fighter. Hello, and welcome to another Plane Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Butane, and today, let's look at another Wunderwaffen that was not to be. Need for a new jet fighter. During the war, the Germans introduced the Messerschmitt 262, which had the honor of being the very first operational jet fighter in the world. While it provided better performance than ordinary piston-powered aircraft, it was far from perfect. Among its issues was that it was expensive to build, requiring two jet engines, and therefore simply could not be built in sufficient numbers. The German Air Ministry wanted a much simpler and cheaper design to be powered by a single engine. They issued a competition for a new jet fighter, codenamed 1TL Jaeger, during July 1944 for all available aircraft manufacturers. Some of the requirements listed were that it was to be a single-seater, have a maximum speed of 1,000 km per hour or 620 miles per hour, an endurance of at least one hour, armor protection for the pilot, use the Heinkel HES-011 engine, and have an armament that had at least two 30mm Mk-108 cannons. During a meeting with leading German aircraft manufacturers, Held in September 1944, Messerschmitt presented the P-1101, designed by Valdemar Voigt. Development History Messerschmitt's engineers and designers began working on designing a single-engine jet aircraft at the start of 1943. Two projects, 1092 and 1095, were both powered by a single UNO 004 jet engine. But, as the Messerschmitt 266 was entering full production, the development was largely suspended. These projects were shelved until the RLM competition in 1944. Seeing a new opportunity, Messerschmitt presented drawings of a new project named P1011, which was influenced by the previous projects. It had an all-metal fuselage construction, and was powered by one Heinkel S011 engine with air intakes located at the wing roots. It also had a V-shaped tail configuration. Following a meeting with the RLM officials in September, some changes were made to the overall design. Instead of two air intakes, a single one in the nose was to be used. This also necessitated the redesigning of the cockpit which was moved backwards. In addition, the rear V-tail was replaced by a conventional fin design. At this early stage, the possibilities of using this aircraft for other purposes were still being explored. Besides a standard fighter, other roles were considered, including night fighter and interceptor. On the 10th of November, the owner of the company, Willy Messerschmitt, issued orders to begin working on the first experimental prototype. To speed up the development time, it was proposed to reuse the already produced components of the Messerschmitt 262. As a result, the fuselage, wing design, and construction from the Messerschmitt were to be copied. End of the project. The P1101 prototype was only partially completed in early 1945. It appears that despite Messerschmitt's attempts to complete this project, the RLM simply lost interest. Messerschmitt's other projects, like the P1110 and the P1111, showed greater potential than the P1101. This, together with the fact that the promised engine never arrived, meant that the single, incomplete prototype was put into storage at the Messerschmitt Oberammergau Research Center. It remained there until the war's end, when it was captured by American forces. Technical Characteristics 
The P1101 was a single-seater, jet-engine-powered, mixed-construction fighter. The lower portion of the old metal fuselage was designed to house the jet engine. In the front of the fuselage, a round intake was placed. To the rear, the fuselage was reinforced to avoid any damage due to the heat of the jet exhaust. The underside of the fuselage was to have a skid to help with emergency landings. While it was originally intended to be powered by the HES-011 engine, the power plant was never supplied and the UMO-004B was to be used as a replacement. The main fuel tank with a capacity of 1,100 liters was placed just behind the cockpit. The only engine ever installed was a mock-up so it was never tested properly even on the ground. Due to this, it is unknown what the P1101's overall flight performance would have been. Some sources give rust estimates of its speed, such as 890 km an hour or 550 miles per hour at sea level and up to 980 km per hour, 610 miles per hour at higher altitudes. Of course, these are only estimations contingent on the aircraft performing as expected. In addition, the general ability to test flight characteristics at transonic or supersonic speeds were extremely crude at this point. The wings were constructed of wood. The prototype would have had a completely innovative feature, namely the sweep angle of the wings could be adjusted at different angles ranging from 35 degrees to 45 degrees. The rear vertical and horizontal tail assemblies were also to be made of wood. The P1101 also had a retracting tricycle type landing gear. It consisted of one forward mounted wheel and two mid fuselage wheels. All three retracted rearwards into the fuselage. The cockpit had a round canopy with good all around visibility. The basic armament configuration consisted of two MK108 cannons with 100 rounds each. These were to be placed in the front lower part of the fuselage. There were also proposals to increase the firepower by adding two more MK-108 cannons and the use of experimental air-to-air -air missiles were also considered. As the prototype aircraft was built to test overall flight performance, no armaments were ever installed. In American Hands Advancing American soldiers reached the Messerschmitt Omergamau base during April or May of 1945. The single P-1101 was found there and was left open to the elements for some time. Bell Aircraft Chief Designer Robert Woods found out about the existence of this aircraft and once he had a chance to examine it, he organized for it to be shipped back to America for further study. It was to be restored and used for testing. The Bell Aircraft Design Bureau paid great interest to a variable wing design. Working from the P-1101, they would eventually develop the Bell X-5 one of the first operational aircraft that could change the positions of its wings during flight. Conclusion While incorporating the innovative feature of variable swept wings, the P-1101 was another victim of the chaotic state Germany was in at the end of the war. Whether this aircraft could have performed its role is unknown, and while it never flew with the Luftwaffe, it helped the Americans develop the Bell X-5 after the war, which incorporated the same variable wing design and many other of the same design elements. Well, that's it for this look into the Messerschmitt 1101. Again, I was your host Butane, and keep us in your sights.